Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Mike and you're watching Triple T Acres and I'm standing here in front of my tractor with the pallet forks mounted to the front and we've got to do a little bit of modifications to these pallet forks. Now I got these things used a while ago and just like a lot of equipment on my property, I'm not afraid to get something used to save a little bit of money, especially when it comes to something like pallet forks. There's not a lot of moving parts to it. The main things that can go wrong with it, maybe some bent forks, but this tractor is way underrated compared to what these things are originally used for on a skid steer. Now, when you get used equipment, sometimes you gotta make modifications to them or fix modifications that the previous owner had. And that's exactly what we gotta do today. I have a two inch hitch receiver mounted to the front here from the previous owner, and I really like that concept. However, I don't think they thought it all the way through because you cannot remove these forks without hitting that two inch hitch receiver. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be taking this thing off and I've got a new tool that I've been dying to get for my shop for such a long time and I can't wait to share it with you. So stick around guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Now before we start cutting this thing off, I wanted to show you what I was talking about. As you see the pallet forks here have a little pin you pull and then the forks will slide over it. and there's a nice little opening right here on the bottom part of the frame. The issue is when I get to here, it prevents me from getting all the way over here because of that hitch right there. So as you can see, I've already tried to cut it with an angle grinder. It's just a really bad angle for that tool. So what we're gonna be using today is a plasma cutter and I'm gonna show you that right now. And another reason why I wanna get these forks to come off is as you can see right here, this one's a little bit bent. And it hasn't been a huge burden when I go into pallets, but it is getting a little annoying. So I wanna get this thing off, take it to a shop somewhere and get this tip bent so it can be straight just like the other one. All right guys, this is the tool that we're gonna be using today to cut off that hitch receiver. And it is the Vivor Plasma Cutter. Now the model of it is the CUT or the Cut 50P. Now what's really great about this, other than the price point of less than $250, is that you can use it on 120 volts or 240 volts. So it comes with this adapter here, and if you have the right plugs for it, you can run it off a 240 or again, 120. Now I'm gonna be using it as 120 volts today, although I do have a 240 volt connection. I wanted to make sure that this is something practical for mostly everybody because I am not an experienced welder or an experienced plasma cutter, which hopefully gives you some encouragement that maybe this is something that you can get into if you'd like to use a piece of equipment like this and not be so invested in such an expensive piece of a complicated piece of equipment. This so far has been really easy to set up very minimal assembly, just a few screws here to add this, which is supposed to allow you to wind up some of these cords, which I think is not practical. There's too much here, but this is such a small footprint that I can actually put this on a shelf somewhere, get it over and out of the way, and actually would love to build a nice car for this thing in the long term. Super easy assembly here. Again, I just had to make some of these connections here. You can't really mess that up because each fitting fits exactly the way it should. You can't mix and match those. And then here on the back, I had to mount the air regulator, which is the air pressure that will push some of that cutting and this hose right here with some clamps. It only took me probably 20 minutes to get this thing assembled. So that's a quick run through on it. So let's get this thing plugged in and start working on getting that thing cut off. You know, I'm actually going to disconnect these pallet forks from the tractor. I'm sure it would be okay, but with the electrical current that goes through, I'll have the ground hooked up to it, but I really don't want to risk frying any of my computer components on the tractor. All right, so I've got the air hose connected here to the back, and it looks like my air pressure is set a little high. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. What you do is you pull up on it and then you turn it. So we're gonna set it to about 60 PSI. We'll go with that. Now again, I'm using this off of 120 volts. You see it's adapted down and I got it plugged in with a really heavy duty extension cord here. Now I should be able to cut this. If not, we'll have to switch over to 240 volts, but I think it should do a good job. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna cut it across here and I'm actually gonna cut it down a little bit. I don't wanna follow the welds all the way around. Just because of the angle of this, I think it's gonna to be tough to try to angle it in like that. So I'm gonna go straight down and then I'm gonna meet my cuts here in the back and just remove this. And I might have to grind off some of the stuff on the end there. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to take this thing off. 
It's got a nice little safety thing here so you can't accidentally press the button unless you really want to. So real quick, I'll show you what it looks like here at the end. There's a little guide here that keeps you the right distance away from the metal because you don't ever want to touch the tip of it on there. And then it's got a nice edge here that you can run as a guide along the straight edge. And that's what I'm going to do like right here. So it should keep me nice and flat here. So let's see how it goes. All right, ready? All right, looks like we need to turn it up just a little bit. All right, we turned it up just a little bit. And I went ahead and grinded a spot. Maybe my, my ground wasn't the greatest there. Let's see if we can uh, get a little bit better penetration here. Oh yeah, we're cutting now. Oh, must have tripped a breaker. All right, so we tripped a breaker because my air compressor was on the same circuit. I got them on different circuits now, so let's get back to it. My cut looks like it's a little crooked here, but we'll, uh, we'll see if we can straighten it out here. Much better. of the hammer and should take it off. Heck yeah, it is off. All right, that's what's left on there. I just take a little angle grinder and just cut this little tip off and then this should be able to slide over. I should be able to get these forks off. Yeah, that's pretty thick metal. And again, I'm using it at 120 volts, so really ugly cuts but that is my inexperience someone with more experience could definitely do a way better job all right now we got that cut off let's get it back on the tractor and see if we can get the forks off now that that thing's cut off all right moment of truth See if we can get this power fork off now. Sweet. That's what I needed it to do. Well, I think this Vivor plasma cutter did a good job. And a couple things that I learned while doing it is I tripped the breaker several times. Now, I would say that's mostly my fault because I had too many things on the same circuit. The air compressor would kick on while I'm using it and it would overload that breaker. And I'm really stretching that breaker to its max capacity. So it tripped a few times, not that big a deal. I was able to get those things switched to different outlets and it worked a lot better. So I would definitely say, if you're gonna use the 120 volts, choose a little bit thinner metal. If you have the option, plug into that 240 volts and it should, and it says that it'll go up to a half inch steel, which is pretty impressive especially since these are budget tools. Vivor, if you're not familiar with it, they sell a lot of different things and they're geared towards entry level type tools without sacrificing a lot of the quality. And again, I think that this thing worked really, really well, especially since I have no idea what I'm doing. And that brings up another point. If you are experienced and you wanna give me some tips in the comments, I'm sure anybody that's looking to buy one of these is probably gonna be entry level as well. They could probably benefit from some constructive criticism. Now guys, I will put a link down in the description. It's gonna be an affiliate link, so if you purchase it through that link, I'll receive a little bit of a commission, but it shouldn't cost you any more money. It just helps out the channel. But guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. But until next time, we'll see you in the next video.